if you haven't read anything by Q Hayashida, I think it's about high time you rethink your life decisions. Let's not waste any time today. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get right into the meat of the video here. But first I wanna have a real quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And don't forget that there's always an uncensored version of these videos up on Patreon because there's definitely gonna be a few panels in here that need to be censored this week. Anyway, we start right off this week with the doctor friend from the hospital and his friend that's like that guy who experiments on sorcerers cutting the mushroom off of Nikaido's back. The very next page is like that friend holding up the mushroom and he's like, you mind if I keep this? And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I do mind, actually. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna do with that mushroom and I'm not sure I trust you with it. I mean, next thing you know, you'll have furniture that's been like upholstered with mushroom flesh or something. I don't know what you do with things. You're weird. But from here, we pretty much move straight into Shin's backstory. Because at one point in time, Shin came into the hospital where the doctor works and he actually took care of Shin. And basically, Shin was a kid back in the hole when the hole actually had like this enforcement group that would go around hunting up sorcerers and killing them or capturing them or something. And Shin was like a half-breed. His dad was human and his mom was a sorcerer. So he technically had sorcerer blood in him but didn't have any smoke or magic. And one day he's at work and he cuts his finger and his boss sees that there's like grit or black soot or something in his blood, which is a telltale sign of being a sorcerer. So he turns him into this little enforcement group and the enforcement group then comes after Shin. And, and to be quite honest, I really appreciated this section. I kind of liked it just because I really like Shin. I don't know what it is about Shin, but he kind of just automatically became one of my favorite characters. And I, and I think my love for Shin is so shallow that it literally consists of he looks cool and he tears people up with a claw hammer. I think that uh, pretty much boils down my, my, my true affection for Shin. It's that's, that's how, that's how easy I am to please. Either way, he's one of my favorite characters. Anyway, his dad helps him get away from the enforcement group. And then when he goes back home, he finds that they have killed his dad. So Shin goes completely fucking insane. And he just goes on a rampage. And he just tears through the group there in the apartment. And then just group after group after group. He slaughters them by the dozens. To the point where eventually the doctor and his friend go back to the hospital and they find Shin there and Shin has literally diced his arms into like a hundred pieces, cutting them up bit by bit by bit by bit, looking for his smoke glands because he's supposed to be a sorcerer, but he has no magic and he has no smoke. So he's literally cutting himself apart looking for these smoke glands. And the little psycho friend, the one that, you know, cuts people up and makes doors out of their skin. It's like, oh, cool, I'll help, you know. Of course you would. Anyway, and he ends up finding his smoke glands and unclogging them or whatever, and then is so nice as to put the arms back together and sew them back on. Pieces them back together, I guess. And at this point, I realize I don't even know what Shin's magic is. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him use it. Even in the one video when Kaiman went to attack him and Kaiman's like, magic doesn't work on me. And I was like, I bet hammers do. Now that I think back on it, all I've ever seen him use is just brute force and a hammer. Even by the end of this read, I don't think I know what his magic is. And it's technically it's unclogged so he can use it. It's not like he couldn't use it. You know, like, oh no, I'm clogged forever. I guess it'll be hammer time forever. I just don't know. Now, real quick, we're gonna cut to Kaiman and the doctors are telling him that Nikaido's a sorcerer and he just flatly refuses to believe them, which is fun and funny and nice because I thought for a second, I don't think I brought my, this concern up, but I was real worried when they made Nikaido a sorcerer and she's running around behind his back being sneaky, trying to keep it a secret from him. I thought that was gonna become like a thing where at all times, oh no, she's a sorcerer, but oh no, he can't know. And you know, and it was gonna get real old, real fast. And I was gonna, I was real worried that that mechanic 
was not going to work for me. Well, that mechanic's gone. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not not a thing. Now, he knows that she's a sorcerer, and he's just sub stubbornly not believing it because he's Kaiman, which tells me that eventually, actually, probably sooner rather than later, sooner than I even expected it to happen, which is, once again, fine. I'm happy with that. He's going to find out, and then we'll just move forward with our lives. But we don't have time for any of that because Nikaido's missing. So Kaiman chases the culprit down around through that creepy alley down into the down into the sewers and comes face to face with a cockroach. I just realized why the cockroach's name is funny. Literally right now as I was filming this. Oh shit. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they fight for a little bit. And Kaiman leaves the roach behind, runs through a door, and comes face to face with the guy who kidnapped Nikaido, who then yells for Johnson, get it? I didn't until right now, which turns out to be the cockroach. And this is just an example of the ridiculous comedy of this manga. It just lands for me, and I love it. And I wrote that note before I realized the, what the name connection. Anyway, the comedy, like just the fact that, a, that the roach shows up and he's got a name and he's fighting and I don't know, it's just so funny. It's so weird and it's so twisted and it's just so out of left field at all times. I love it so much and it just makes me laugh. And the things I don't expect, like, like the roach showing up, is hilarious to me. It used to be Ibisu, and it still is. Oh my god, it's still Ibisu. But they just add so much more in here that continues to land. It's so impressive. I am how many books deep now, and it just... I don't think I've met a section that hasn't worked for me. Maybe one. Actually two. I don't know. It is just stupid, entertaining fun. Anyway, back in the sorcerer's world, N sends Ibisu smoke off to be analyzed. Shin and Noi go out to find Risu, and Fujita is going to grab some guns and go to the hole thinking he's going to kill Kaiman, and Ibisu tags along. Now, in the hole, Kaiman and Nakaido are going to prepare for a baseball game, and Fujita is going to show up, and he's going to join the opposing team. And they're short a teammate, but wait, Johnson shows up, and he's going to be the last member of the team. Why? Who f knows <laughs> it doesn't really matter i don't think oh wait the other team's surprise player is a player called frankenstein which is actually just matsumura brought back to life kind of like the living dead like a walking corpse basically which of course sets off fujita because that's his old partner how dare you do that to his corpse but at the same time then he gets excited because now he's got this idea that he's going to kidnap him and he's going to rush him back to that dog thing, and they're gonna resurrect him, bring him back from the dead like they did with Ibisu. Also, real quick, we get a shot of Ibisu's smoke getting, the little vial getting broken over top of Noi's head. Is it Lucifer's ear? Whose ear? Somebody's ear, right? What's the dog's name? But anyway, the game starts and they start to play, and Matsumura realizes that he can add his magic to the ball to make it throw faster or better or straighter or something and he even makes a comment that he doesn't ever use his magic because it's so weak and i immediately go well you're using it to throw faster even to the point where it burns through a glove at one point although that might be off of a hit although either way it doesn't matter my mind goes immediately to yeah it might be weak but i'm sure if you were clever you could find a way to make that work i mean we could gambit this shit up or something I feel like this could be useful, and you're just blowing it off like it's nothing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is worthless. Who f***ing knows? And the only thing, and the only thing I really have to say about this section is, if there was a low point in my reading for these two books, it was this section. I really wasn't digging the ball game, and I think it was there for comedic effect. I don't know what it was there for, but. I was getting bored, um, not even gonna lie. There was a chapter I wasn't thrilled with in the last one. It felt like an extra evil, I said. And this one, I wasn't thrilled with either. So there's been a couple of chapters that have been bleh for me, but other than that, this is so far. If I've, there's two chapters out of, what is this, 30 that I haven't been thrilled with? Hey, you're, 
we're what's that what's that average out to be the point i'm trying to make is it's it's doing real well anyway he's eventually going to kidnap matsumura and he's going to run back to the sorcerer's world with him and now back in the sorcerer's world noi has transformed into a giant lizard monster from ibisu's smoke so maybe ibisu is the one who turned kaiman into the giant lizard monster huh and now she's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shin. And if you are worried about Shin for a second, because, you know, Big Mommy Noi is now Big Mommy Lizard Noi, and she's going to take him out, don't be. Because Shin's going to stick his hand right through her fucking throat <laughs> in about two seconds flat and put her down. Because Shin's just amazing, apparently. I mean, on levels we weren't even aware of. He doesn't even need a hammer. He needs his fingers. Boom. Also, don't worry, because N knows somebody that can turn Noi back into a normal person. And it's his partner. And he keeps him locked up for some reason. And we go there, and it's a bird, but it looks like kind of like a gimp. So it's like a gimp bird? Bird gimp? Don't ask. And he can only bring him back with an organ from the person that she cares about the most, which is convenient because Shin's intestines are hanging out from where this side got ripped open in the fight with Noi. So now we can perform the ceremony or the spell or whatever it is. And welcome back, Big Mommy Noi. And, and I feel like there's gotta be a reason why Q always finds an excuse to get this woman naked and almost nobody else. Uh, I mean, there's a few other instances, but nowhere near as many as she finds for Noi. Now, switch back over to Fujita and crew, and Matsumura uh, slash Frankenstein goes kind of crazy and starts attacking them, which triggers Ibisu's magic, and Ibisu turns into this giant, I don't know, raptor-looking thing, and literally shreds Matsumura. And I mean, like, liquefies him, <laughs> and then just pops back into Ibisu, and she's like, oh yeah, now I remember, and you're like, really? But anyway, so she remembers that the guy inside of Kaiman's throat said, you're the one who stopped me. So now they go run and they find N so that they can tell N. And in the process of telling N, we, all, N, we also find out that the analysis on Ibisu's smoke comes back. And we find out that Ibisu's smoke turns people into lizards. We also find out that Ibisu's smoke isn't even rare. So... Maybe Ibusu isn't the one who turned Kaiman into a giant lizard. Oh. Uh -huh. Anyway, switch back to Kaiman and Nikaido, and Kaiman has made the decision to leave the hole and go back to the sorcerer's world in search of Risu, and he's going to leave Nikaido behind, and he's going to go off by himself. Now, in the sorcerer's world, Kaiman's going to immediately find a job like that working for a restaurant, go figure that makes meat pies instead of whatever the hell Nikaido makes. He didn't actually work for Nikaido. I'm just saying it's, he ends up in a restaurant. That big surprise there. Meanwhile, all of the sorcerers are preparing for an event called Blue Night, which is where all of the sorcerers get together and they have to pick a new partner for the next year or something. And then they have like applications to be partners. It's a big ceremony event party thing the rules and the inner workings of the sorcerer world are really weird i mean between the devils and the smoke and the magic and the weird ceremonies and the events and the parties and more parties and you have to have a custom suit and then you have another party it's really weird i don't even try and keep track and i just kind of roll with it and i'm assuming that's what i'm supposed to do it might never make sense I don't really care if it does either, to be quite honest. But anyway, they bring somebody in to make custom outfits for the party, because that's what you do in this world. And we find out that N is looking for a sorcerer who can control time. And at this point, my mind goes straight to Nikaido. Like, apparently, is that what she can do? I'm not sure. I think that's where my mind is supposed to be going. Or at least that's where it went. Anyway, now the clothes are ready. And boy, oh boy, is Big Mommy Noi ready too. Woo! And Shin pretty much looks the same. And now, Kaiman, after being told not to leave the restaurant, immediately leaves the restaurant to go to Blue... What did I call it? Blue something? The Blue Knight. He knocks out some guards, steals one of their uniforms, and sneaks into the event. 
Then, right as the party's getting started, somebody goes and blows up Noi. I don't appreciate that. I don't think Shin does either. And we flash to N, who's now going to give us a backstory of Shin and Noi and how they met. And at one point, I said that these were like the bad guys, but they didn't feel like the bad guys. It felt more like another group of people that we followed that just happened to be at odds with the main characters of the story. Now I feel like that's actually how we're supposed to be looking at this. The more it evolves, because the more that she gives us backstories on these people and who they are and how they met and how they came from, and it's setting us up to sympathize or empathize with them more, just proves to me that this is exactly how we're supposed to be viewing these story. We're just really watching a group of people wandering through this cluster f that is this story, and it's just mad entertainment, and I love it. But anyway, when Shin meets Noi back in the day, Shin in his sack mask, and Noi in her suit of armor, and Shin's arms are literally rotting from where he had chopped them up, and that other guy kind of sewed them back onto him, so Noi heals his arms for him, and we learn that Noi is in training to be a devil. And in order to transform into a devil, she has to stop using magic and not use it for an entire year. She gets all the way to like three days or so away from her one year mark, even to the point where she starts sprouting horns when Shin is attacked to the point where he's dying. He's going to die if somebody doesn't save him. And she chooses to use her magic to save Shin because in the past year they've become friends and kind of bonded and formed a little connection. And she gives up her opportunity to become a devil in order to save Shin. Now, flashback to the present day, and Shin goes in to uh, find out what happened to Noi when Noi got blown up, and he gets knocked out by a chandelier of syringes. And then the guys take him and Noi away. They lock Noi in a box, which is effectively going to make it so she can't heal herself, and Shin just gets stuck in a bag. And then they fly away on broomsticks. And the guy with Shin in a bag runs over Kaiman, who then gets into a fight with the another guy that's standing there. And then the guy that just with Shin just kind of flies away. This was really kind of hectic and chaotic. This whole read through because of the way it just kind of bounces around all over the place. I know it always does that, but this one was a little bit more chaotic than normal. Either that or I was just a little bit more frazzled and disconnected because I was getting lost. Like something would happen and I'd be like, wait, what just happened? I'd go back. It was almost like I was reading Blam. Like I said, I don't know if this one was just a little bit more disjointed than the previous books or if I just was like off in La La Land and I don't know. It might have been my fault is what I'm saying. But this read through was a little bit harder to track sometimes. Anyway, Kaiman and the other guy get into a fight and the guy in the room with Shin gets away. And Kaiman really f the guy up and I can't decide sometimes if Kaiman's really good or if he's a big idiot I feel like sometimes he just walks in and he just murders people and other times he walks in and he fumbles through a situation like a big old idiot I really think it's just whatever convenient for the plot at that point in time it feels like an insult but it wasn't intended to be anyway Risu just kind of walks into the room where the box of Noi is and opens the box, which lets out a puff of Noi's smoke, and Noi heals herself, and poof, Noi's back. And somehow knocks Risu's head off, and poof, Risu's got a body back, because Noi's smoke is filling up the room. And Noi immediately goes running back to Enns, because she's looking for Shin. But Shin's not there, because he's in a bag on the back of a broomstick somewhere, and she goes running away looking for him. But now we get to see that N is looking for that time-controlling sorcerer when he sees security footage of Nikaido. And he goes, wait a second, I remember seeing that chick. I know her, and she was in the room where I set off that weird mushroom explosion. So now I can track her and find her. And he does, and he makes a voodoo doll, and he shoves a, guess what, a mushroom in the voodoo doll. And which then makes a giant mushroom monster fly out of Nikaido's back from where she was infected from the last volume, or two volumes ago. Last video, two volumes ago. Anyway, all hell breaks loose. The mushroom monster char starts tearing through the place, literally melts the doctor. I was shocked. And like, the doctor, hospital doctor, that used to be 
Kaiman's boss, not the creepy doctor that makes skin, skin doors out of sorcerers. Yeah, the hospital doctor. Anyway, Johnson pretty much runs in and saves the day. And I'm not going to lie. Out of both of these books that I just read, the my favorite scene, probably the scene that I got more enjoyment out of than any other scene in both of these books was Johnson running in and kicking the shit out of the mushroom monster. That made me laugh so hard. Harder than anything else that I read in these two books. My highlight of books four and five easily johnson kicking the shit out of a mushroom monster that fight was the best but anyway they get away just long enough for nikaido to get patched up and to decide that she's gonna break her vow of never using magic again and she goes up to the storage room and gets her mask puts it on jumps down and tears the shit out of the mushroom monster just in time for a hold open up in the floor and they fall through the floor into the sorcerer's world in En's mansion and he's just like well hello Nikaido the end and and this was a little crazy the yeah it was I'm gonna go for some reason I feel like this one as much as I love this story uh, there was it drug a little bit more. I don't know what it was about book four book four drug for me Especially in the baseball section. I know already. I know I already said that and I gave the last one an 8.5 And I think this read through which includes both of these books. I'm gonna go with an 8 I think Even though the story is amazing and it's keeping me super engaged every time I feel like I'm starting to drift away something else you know, like my actual engagement in the events of what's happening. Because you have, I guess you have like just the comedic through line of just everything being funny, which pretty much is consistent. And then the actual events that are happening, like the mysteries um, and oh no, Shin's getting kidnapped and noise missing and, you know, Kaiman leaves Nikaido or Kaiman and, you know, the actual events that matter. <laughs> So every time I feel like the actual events that matter are losing me because, or they're not interesting, something happens and it pulls me right back in. So that's good. And I like that. And, the, and all the while keeping the through line of just ridiculous comedy going. So that's great. The only problem with this one was my investment in the actual events of the story dipped a little bit harder than it did before in the previous volumes. But I'm right back where I was now with Shin being missing and what's going on there and Nikaido's back in En's mansion and Kaiman's off doing whatever the f Kaiman's doing. So I'm back at peak interest level, but I, overall I think I'm still gonna give it an eight. I think I rambled just a little bit too long on that one. That's okay. Anyway, we're gonna give it an eight. Links for both the Discord and the Patreon are in the description below and as always, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.